Hello. Hello. Nice to see you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hello, guys. Nice to see you. How are you doing? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. <coughs> Hello. Hi. Hello, everyone. Okay. So last time we um, uh, continued discussion of magnetic field and uh, today we are going to make one step forward and uh, um, introduce and uh, look for some uh, possibilities for applications uh, of two a very important uh, laws, Faraday's and Lenz laws, which uh, tell us um, something um, about uh, possible creation of um, electrom electromotive force, uh, which is um, formed not by um, some charge distribution, but uh, by changing magnetic field in time. <clears throat> so um, if we look up to now, like so far, we um, considered electric field and magnetic fields um, as uh, formed by uh, immobile chargers or electric field and um, mobile charges, which are moving with certain um, velocity. Uh, for uh, magnetic field. <clears throat> so those we considered as um, sources for um, electric and magnetic fields. Um, however, uh, it's not only an option. Uh, and uh, uh, today we will um, discuss the formation of electric field by changing um, in time magnetic field. So that is actually the uh, key um, relationship which comes out from um, Lawrence, uh, sorry, for, for, from Faraday um, law. Uh, so, uh, and actually has quite long uh, standing consequences, which we will um, deal uh, in the uh, future. Uh, also, this fact of creation of electric field by changing in time magnetic field um, has found a really very broad practical application in different um, devices. Um, and uh, we will also try to discuss some of them. So um, let me probably first share my screen. So um, it was actually found that <clears throat> uh, if we have some closed um, conductor loop, um, as shown here, we have some device like let's say ampere meter or voltmeter, which can measure voltage or um, current. So in this particular case, let's consider we have some um, current flowing, so it's some per meter. Um, if we change uh, magnetic field next to this loop um, of electric wire um, by placing closer and further, like moving back and forth, uh, some permanent magnet, obviously, and magnitude of magnetic field in this area will change. Um, that will cause uh, certain electric current inside the um, this closed wire loop. Uh, so obviously, if there is some current, um, that should be also associated with some um, 
electromotive force because we need to create internal electric field inside this wire in order to uh, move mobile charges available in the conductor um, in order to uh, transport charge and create electric current. So this will work both for ampere meter if we measure some uh, current signal, or we can also switch to uh, voltmeter regime uh, when we will measure um, potential difference between these two terminals. Um, when we start uh, moving this um, left and right, this permanent magnet, um, it will show certain voltage or as shown here, some current. Uh, what is interesting that depends on the direction of this permanent magnet motion, either it comes uh, closer, so magnetic field increases, or it goes further, magnetic field decreases. Uh, the sign of um, uh, potential difference between these uh, terminals or the direction of electric current as shown here um, will uh, change. So on this, we will focus a little bit um, uh, later when we introduce Lenz law. Um, but what is important to highlight that if we don't move with this um, permanent magnet and magnetic field uh, remains constant in this um, area of the wire loop, uh, nothing happens. So we don't have any signal. Um, which means that uh, actually what creates this electromotive force and um, improves, uh, like pro provides uh, charge transport in this loop, um, definitely related directly with the um, uh, changing uh, magnetic uh, field in time, because if it remains constant, nothing happens. So, <clears throat> Uh, actually, another um, example, which um, could be interesting to show that, uh, imagine that we have two uh, coils, uh, let's call it primary and secondary coil, um, and uh, uh, there is some uh, iron uh, torque. Uh, which is used uh, as a um, uh, construction over which we uh, create these turns of wires in order to form the coil. So uh, it is necessary to underline that uh, we consider isolated wires. So they are electrically decoupled. There is no connection between these two coils. And uh, uh, when this electric circuit connected to the battery is open. There is no signal. If we turn on this uh, battery, some current starts to flow through the primary coil. Um, so it changes from zero to some value, which is determined by uh, electromotive force of battery divided by resistance of this primary coil. Um, so it's some very fast uh, process of increase of current once we turn on the battery. And uh, what is interesting that regardless of electrical of being electrically decoupled, the in uh, in secondary coils there will be some electromotive force generated, and um, also will be some. Um, current flowing through this circuit. Depends what we connect, either voltmeter or uh, ampere meter. <coughs> so by the way, do you remember what is the uh, key difference between voltmeter and ampere meter? Any? How is it connected? What? Uh, difference between how they connected to the circuit. Uh, yeah, that's true. Um, voltmeter is connected in parallel and ampere meter is connected in series. However, 
in this particular case, we have just oil with two terminals. So there are no options to connect uh, in different ways. You just have these two terminals, which you will connect to both ampere meter or uh, volt meter. There is something inside this device, which is very different in order to let us measure current or voltage. <clears throat> Any suggestions? I mentioned about this during our previous lectures. Um, there is such a parameters internal resistance of a device. So if we want to measure current, means we don't want to disturb um, electric circuit with adding some additional resistance. Uh, since we connect the parameter in series in order to measure electric current. Um, we want to keep total resistance of the electric circuit <coughs> unchanged. And that means that internal resistance of ampere meter should be very small, or much smaller than resistance of the electric circuit which we measure. In the case of voltmeter, that's different. Um, we want to measure voltage drop. And in order to prevent uh, changing uh, like redistribution of voltage drop over um, circuit and voltmeter. So we want to know exactly voltage drop over this uh, our circuit element, for instance. Uh, for that purpose, we want to have the highest possible internal resistance to prevent any current to flow through voltmeter and get us actually uh, real uh, voltage which we want to measure. So that these are two um, like key difference between voltmeter and ampere meter and um, would be good if you guys um, remember this. So um, what is happening further when uh, electric circuit is closed, uh, there is some signal also very short in time and then it decays. So when current like DC not changing in time current flowing through this primary coil, nothing is going on. Um, the circuit doesn't show uh, any current or voltage of this secondary coil. <clears throat> However, if we turn off this uh, circuit, uh, then um, here we will have very uh, fast decay of electric current, and that will cause change of magnetic field which it creates. It's kind of a solenoid, this coil. So that change of magnetic field will be causing some electromotive force and current in the secondary coil in opposite direction. Um, also quite shortly until uh, there is no current in primary coil. There is no current in primary coil, no change of magnetic field in uh, time means in the secondary coil, there will be also no uh, electromotive force or any uh, signal. <clears throat> so um, this is kind of qualitative description uh, of Faraday's law, um, Faraday's effect of um, induced electromotive force by changing magnetic field in time. Um, and now let us switch to um, slides where we can uh, write and we will go for some quantitative uh, description. Okay, so we said that this induced electromotive force um, is um, caused by changing magnetic field. However, if we want to give some quantitative um, value for this induced electromotive force, epsilon, um, there is such an equation which actually states, uh, describes this Faraday's law. Uh, we introduced last time such 
parameter as flux of magnetic field. So we remember that flux of magnetic field um, depends on the area of the uh, loop of the some frame which we consider uh, and magnitude of magnetic field. If we deal with um, this induced electromotive force, actually what is relevant, not only, not just changing magnetic field, but changing magnetic flux overall. And uh, it will look like this. We need to put minus. This minus comes a bit later explanation from uh, Lenz law. We will discuss this um, in more details. And here we have first derivative of magnetic field flux uh, over time. <clears throat> uh, if we have uh, some n number of turns, in some coil, then uh, we can write that induced electromotive force is equal to minus n times first derivative of magnetic field flux over time. So <clears throat> let us consider this uh, change of magnetic field flux over time. If we consider some um, Uh, wire loop, uh, which is placed in magnetic field. And it's normal to the surface of this um, loop, forms some angle eta to the magnetic field vector. Then, according to our previous discussion, um, we can write that magnetic field flux, uh, which is in general equal to um, scalar product of magnetic field vector and this A vector. Uh, in this particular uh, case, um, when we uh, want to know the magnitude of um, magnetic field uh, flux, uh, we uh, get magnetic field uh, times area of this loop and uh, times cosine theta. <clears throat> so now, if we want to calculate um, electromotive force, which could be uh, induced in this closed uh, conductive loop, um, we will get the following. So we have minus first derivative of this expression over time. So it will be dB times um, A times cosinus theta divided by dt. So maybe we can put, take it in parentheses. So, um, Actually, there are several options to result in changing magnetic field flux over uh, time. So first of all, it could be time dependent magnetic field. So magnetic field can change um, over time. And uh, even if we have some stationary uh, fixed shape, uh, loop, uh, there will be generated certain electromotive force because of um, changing magnetic field uh, in this vicinity, in the vicinity of the loop. Um, also, what can happen? Uh, the area of the loop can change. So imagine that we move uh, up or um, down um, this one side of the uh, loop, let's say in this case, we can move down. So we will kind of reduce the area of the loop um, that will cause changing um, magnetic field flux. And uh, um, 
if we have time dependent area of the loop that will also contribute to the um, electro induced electromotive force. Uh, so another option we can change this angle theta between the magnetic field vector and normal to the um, surface of the loop. Um, so if theta also becomes time dependent, um, we will get some uh, induced electromotive force. Um, either one of these possibilities work or a combination of them. So it can be changing magnetic field over time and also um, changing um, orientation, angle theta. And then we will have a bit more complicated uh, case um, because uh, contribution, there will be um, two contributions to the induced electromotive force. Now, um, let us try to uh, consider certain examples, which uh, will be um, showing us uh, how we can calculate uh, electromotive force and like induced electromotive force and induced um, current uh, due to uh, change of magnetic field flux according to um, Faraday's law. So first let us consider time dependent magnetic field. So let's assume that in the area where we have some um, current loop, uh, like uh, wire loop. Oops, this one, right? That's interesting. Hmm. Sorry for this. Looks like my pen is discharged. That's not good. Oh, wait, 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 maybe not. Hmm. Okay, looks like it works. <clears throat> so um, we have time dependent magnetic field. Here is magnetic field, here is time. And we assume that we have some exponential um, decay over time for magnetic field. So we can describe it as B as a function of time equals B naught times exponent minus A times T. So in this case, electromotive force will be equal according to uh, Faraday's law, first derivative over magnetic field flux divided by, uh, like, over time, equal minus D. Here is area, and uh, here is magnetic field, B naught times exponent minus A times T. So we assume that um, magnetic field uh, goes perpendicularly to the surface of the uh, loop. So we don't have any uh, cosine theta because it's equal to unity. And here, dt. 
So um, area is remaining constant. So um, B naught is also constant. So we can, we need to take um, first derivative over time for this expression. This will be minus uh, A minus A times A B naught. And here will be exponent minus A T. Minus and minus will give us plus, and eventually for um, electromotive force, we will get A um, times area times B naught times exponent minus A times T. So that is the expression for induced electromotive force in a closed loop. And uh, what is interesting here that uh, electromotive force is epsilon is also a function of time because uh, this first derivative of the function uh, which describes time dependence of magnetic field um, gives us uh, time dependent function. So that is um, also, uh, that's why our electromotive force um, induced in this um, wire loop will uh, exponentially decay um, over time. Now let us uh, consider some um, so called motional electromotive force. So assume such a system. We have a straight conductor, external magnetic field with magnetic field lines going into the plane of our sketch here. And uh, we assume that this wire has length L and moves with some velocity vector B. We know that in a uh, metal conductor, there are mobile charge carriers electrons, which are negatively charged. So negative the charged uh, electron moves inside this uh, metal conductor uh, together with it. If we have mobile charges in external magnetic field, obviously there will be some magnetic force acting on them. So let's say this is our magnetic force. And uh, if there is some magnetic force acting on mobile electrons in this conductor, they will kind of tend to uh, accumulate closer to the, in this particular case, closer to the bottom part of the straight conduct. So we will have some excessive negative charge at the bottom of this. Um, conduct. If we have some excessive charge at the bottom, in order to <clears throat> remain electrically neutral as it was before, we should have the same but opposite in sign um, positive charge at the um, top edge of the conduct. So, why it happens? Because if we Kind of shift a little bit density of electrons towards the bottom edge. Um, on the opposite edge, there should be some uh, uncompensated um, space charge of positively charged um, ions fixed in the crystalline lattice of the metal conductor. So, 
Initially, the electrons are uniformly distributed all over the conductor. <clears throat> That's why they compensate this uh, charge. Uh, however, if they are partially shifted um, from like towards some edge of the conductor, the other edge lacks electrons and there is some excessive positive charge. So if we have this situation when edges, different edges of uh, conductor are charged in a different, um, with different signs, um, there is some internal electric field induced inside the um, conductor. And this electric field creates some uh, electric, electric force acting on electrons. So here in this direction, we will have some electric force. And on the steady state condition, there will be some equilibrium. So um, this electric force will increase electric field and thus electric force will increase until that moment of time when there will be a balance, means that electric force will be equal to magnetic force. Uh, by magnitude, because they are uh, pointed towards different uh, opposite edges of the semiconductor of this of the um, uh, metal conduct. Uh, so now the question: How we calculate this uh, potential difference delta v, which will be induced at the edges of this um, uh, straight metal conduct. So we know that <clears throat> magnetic force is equal to U times V uh, cross product with B vector, velocity vector cross product B vector according to this orientation, since they are perpendicular to each other, we get, uh, mm, okay, right here, just for magnitude, we will be Q times V times B. Uh, electric force F E is equal to Q times E, trans of magnetic, uh, of electric field. Um, and according to this uh, statement of equilibrium condition, we can write that Q times E should be equal to Q times V B. From here, we get expression for the electric field magnitude will be V times magnetic field magnitude. And if we know electric field, we know the distance L between edges of the conductor. <coughs> we can determine potential difference between these um, edges, which is induced because of uh, moving uh, straight conductor in external magnetic field. So that will be E times L or V times B times L. So this is so-called motional electromotive force. Uh, <clears throat> so now we can translate this um, finding uh, a bit further when we consider uh, some straight conductor sliding on the uh, conducting rails uh, which form together some electric circuit. Let us consider also that example. So we assume that there is some resistor, some conducting rails. Then we have on top of this Uh, some straight conductor. 
and we have also external magnetic field which goes into the plane of the uh, image uh, like perpendicularly to the plane of the image um, so if we apply some external force let's call it f applied to this sliding without any friction uh, metal rod between these uh, rails, um, then the uh, metal rod will start to slide uh, to the right. And uh, that will cause change of the uh, area of this loop will induce certain electromagnetic, uh, electromotive force and will create uh, some electric current flowing through this circuit. So we know that, uh, let's put it here, this X is X and define position of this uh, road as X and this is zero origin. <clears throat> so uh, magnetic, Build flux FB through this current loop uh, will be given by uh, B magnitude of elect, uh, magnetic field times um, L, which is the length of the uh, like distance between these uh, rails times L and times x, which is position of the um, uh, sliding uh, metal rod. So electromotive force will be defined as dfb over dt. So that will be uh, minus d b l x over d x uh, sorry not d x d t d t uh, here b and l are constant they don't change over time there is only one variable x because uh, this uh, metal rod is sliding so we will have b minus b times l dx over dt and this is equal to minus bl uh, first derivative of position over time is speed so that is the electromotive force which is similar to what we derived uh, previously and uh, uh, now the electric current, which will flow, flow through the circuit, um, will be given by um, electro, like absolute value of this electromotive force divided by, uh, sorry, by the resistance of the electric circuit. Here we have resistor R. So we can write that it is equal to b times l v divided by r <clears throat> um, another uh, interesting uh, parameter which uh, is related to this uh, circuit is um, actually power so uh, power can be um, expressed either by power which is delivered to the moving um, uh, like sliding uh, metal rod by external applied force. So we remember that work is force times displacement and um, power is force times uh, speed. So applied times speed. And uh, 
obviously, if there is some electric current in this circuit, there will be some uh, force, magnetic force, acting on the um, conductor with current. It will be F B. Uh, it will be in opposite direction to external force, and they will compensate each other under steady condition. So magnetic uh, force F B, which acts on a conductor with uh, with electric current in external magnetic field, will be equal to I times L length of the conductor times B magnetic field. So instead of applied force, we can put magnetic force because we are dealing with a steady state condition when forces are compensating <clears throat> and equal to like by magnitude to each other. So we can write here I times L times B. So that stands for this applied force. And we have uh, speed. Uh, if we express now this current, because we know that it's not just some random current, it's induced current because of change of magnetic flux. So we have this equation for magnetic, for electric current, uh, induced electric current. So if we substitute it here, we will get the following. So it will be uh, B square times L square times V square divided by R. And B times L times V is actually this guy, and that is induced electromotive force. So that is equal to epsilon square divided by R. So we see that um, the mechanical work done by external force exerted on the sliding uh, conducting wire will be equal to uh, the electric power um, generated by this uh, circuit because of change of um, magnetic uh, field flux through the uh, uh, loop with varying area uh, and will be delivered in like dissipated in form of heat uh, over uh, this resistor uh, R connected to the electric circuit, assuming that all other uh, wires and uh, uh, like rails and uh, con uh, conducting um, rod are like possessed negligibly small electrical resistance. <clears throat> so now we consider different cases for um, induced electromotive force and um, current because of change of magnetic field flux. And we need to discuss a little bit about uh, Lenz law, which uh, makes the following state that uh, the induced current in the loop uh, is always in the direction that creates a magnetic field, this induced magnetic field that opposes the change in magnetic flux uh, through the area which induces this current, um, so which was the origin of this induced uh, electric current. And uh, um, in order to discuss it in a bit more clear way, let's say, let me share with you my screen again. So, oops. if we have such a system with sliding uh, metal rod on some rails. Uh, it goes 
in the first example, it goes to the uh, right. So magnetic field flux is uh, increasing because over time we increase the area which um, of this current loop. So means that uh, electric current which is induced in this circuit has to have a direction. Uh, such a direction which um, creates induced magnetic field trying to reduce magnetic field flux uh, in order to oppose the origin, the reason for the induced uh, current. The origin is increased in magnetic field flux, so the direction of induced magnetic field should be in opposite way to the uh, external magnetic field. Now we have uh, magnetic field external, which goes uh, perpendicularly into the plane of the image. So if we uh, look here, this induced current will go counterclockwise. And with the uh, right hand rule, uh, we will see that the induced uh, uh, magnetic field will be oriented uh, in the opposite direction. So induced magnetic field vector will come um, out from the uh, plane of the uh, image. So if we reduce um, area, so if we look here on the second half of this image, um, if we reduce area of the loop by moving, sliding this uh, metal uh, rod, uh, to the left, then the cause of uh, induced current will be reduction of uh, magnetic field flux. So in this way, induced current should flow in that direction, which is here, the clockwise direction, that the magnetic induced magnetic field originated from this induced current uh, coincide in direction with external magnetic field in order to keep to oppose its reduction of the magnetic oppose the reduction of magnetic field. How it can oppose the reduction of magnetic field? Uh, it can increase magnitude of magnetic field, and um, in order to increase magnitude of magnetic field. Uh, the directions of external magnetic field uh, should be uh, the same as direction of induced magnetic field. So that's why uh, in this case, we have um, clockwise direction of electric current. And uh, um, if we consider that, uh, what if there will be some opposite effect? Let us assume that uh, when we move this sliding uh, rod, conducting rod to the right, um, current flows clockwise instead of counterclockwise. So in that case, we move this um, sliding rod to the right, we increase magnetic field flux, then Induced electric current, which now we consider flows in clockwise direction, will increase external magnetic field because the induced magnetic field will coincide with the external magnetic field. That will further increase magnetic field flux. And uh, it will actually cause uh, more like current flowing in this direction, like clockwise. Uh, and uh, it will be kind of nonstop process, which uh, will gain energy from nowhere. So we will just uh, increase um, electromotive force and induced current uh, by moving the uh, conducting rod to the right side. and uh, simultaneously, that will cause increase of magnetic 
field because induced magnetic field will um, be in the same direction as external magnetic field. And um, it will cause further increase of magnetic field flux with further increase of electromotive force and uh, then uh, further increase of electric current. So that will mean that we gain energy from nowhere and uh, uh, eventually it is just uh, obvious process which violates conservation of energy. So that uh, why it's one option how you can um, show that uh, the direction of um, induced electric uh, current for this particular case when we have um, uh, moving of this uh, conducting rod to the right cannot uh, induced current cannot flow in the clockwise direction. Um, and uh, uh, that's why we have this minus in front of the um, equation for the induced electromotive force. We have uh, minus dFb over dt. Uh, so that's why it shows that uh, induced uh, current creates magnetic field which always opposes the um, original change of magnetic field flux. Uh, it will be uh, in that direction, which will either uh, increase or decrease external magnetic field, depends uh, either we increase or decrease um, magnetic field flux through the electric um, loop, which we consider. So, um, that is the uh, explanation of um, Lorentz, uh, so Lenz um, law, uh, which actually works like and tied very closely to the Faraday's law. They always are considered together because um, they are both uh, included in one equation in the definition of um, induced electromotive force, um, which is equal to negative uh, first derivative of magnetic field flux over um, time. So this is pretty much everything what I wanted to tell. If you have um, questions, you are welcome. Let me stop sharing this. So we introduced today uh, the explanation uh, of uh, Faraday's uh, and Lenz law, and uh, considered several uh, applications of Faraday's law. So yeah, Beck, you are. You have a question. You are welcome. So, uh, as far as understood, um, this case is for the ninety degrees uh, between the field. Um, uh, uh, sure, this, this is in order to make it easier for understanding at this point, uh, this is all for uh, orientation uh, perpendicular to the, uh, of magnetic field perpendicular to the uh, plane of the loop. And uh, would you tell where we should plug the uh, cosinus or sinus in case if, for example, the field will be placed not uh, perpendicular. Uh, yeah, sure. So we will uh, also discuss this uh, a bit uh, more in details um, next uh, lesson. But uh, if we take a, a look here at the beginning, so yes, yeah, this uh, flux. Fb is given as the product of uh, magnitude of magnetic field area and cosine cosinus of this angle theta uh, between the normal to the plane of the loop and external magnetic field. So if we have uh, any uh, angle between them, so obviously, for instance, uh, let's say uh, here uh, where we consider time-dependent magnetic field. Uh, we assume that magnetic field perpendicular to the plane. 
If not, um, then we need to multiply here also by cosinus theta um, between magnetic field vector and normal to the plane. Uh, if this uh, theta angle orientation is constant, doesn't change over time, we can take it out from derivative as a constant. If it depends on time, and uh, let's say theta is some function of time, then we need to take a derivative of uh, the product of two functions. There will be b as a function of time times uh, cosinus theta as a function of time. Uh, we uh, take a derivative of the product of two functions according to the rules for, for that, for taking derivatives for the product of two functions, and um, eventually get the result, uh, which will give us the electromotive force as a function of time also. Well, okay. Thank mm -hmm. you. You're welcome. Okay, guys, and thank you for your attention. Uh, have a good weekend. Take care and see you on Monday. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.